Hello and welcome back to another Demis Helen tutorial. We are going to be talking about mod matrices today and we're going to use Spire to demonstrate this and I'm going to show you how I go about programming modulation knobs and the modulation wheel. And if you're familiar with most of my preset design, most of the time the mod wheel is assigned to the filter cutoff so it opens and closes the filter depending on the mod wheel position. That is a very simple way of applying a parameter to a mod source but what we can do is go a little bit further and I thought I'd choose Spire today because we have four target slots we only have four modulation slots per section which makes it a little bit easier to see and hopefully you can learn it a little bit better let's have a quick look into what a matrix does so quickly off the fly if we look at slot number two here we have a load of sections that we can choose from the synth in the source slot so this is the part that's going to edit the parameters that we set. So we can choose, for example, mod number one. That is now going to modulate or change the parameters of something on the synth. And to what that is, is what you choose. So very quickly and very easily, let's just drag and drop cutoff one to our target. Don't forget, holding alt and then dragging will give you the option to automatically drag and drop routing instead of going through copious amounts of lists trying to find things. So let's just play this little sample and we'll move this mod wheel and just see what happens. Nothing happens and that's because we've got the target assigned but we haven't actually set any parameters and we're going to do that with the slider knob here. So if we bring that up that's going to now open this cutoff filter not all the way but pretty much say just over half of that whole thing. So instead of turning it to here, that's going to do it for us from that point. And these are only limited to the amount of pages that we have. We have five pages and we have three slots on each. So we've got a fair amount of modulation options just in Spire. We do have a lot more. If you choose something like Rapid, for example, there are a lot more modulation capabilities, and that all applies it in a very similar way, but they all have their own UI quirks that to display that modulation. So now that we set target one to the cutoff, say when this filter opens, we actually want more delay to occur. So we can choose here the delay, which is set to dry wet, is nearly 50%. So I'm just going to turn this down and say, so when this is now closed, we're going to have very minimal delay. But if we want the dry wet to actually open up, we can choose target number two, that is free, drag and drop, and we can say increase. That's 100% wet now if that was all turned all the way around. And that is the basics of applying modulation to different targets. Now, if we wanted that to happen the opposite way, we could just drag the slider the other way. But the starting point here means that we've only got that little bit of smidge of space there on that particular parameter. Turning it all the way down is not going to do anything because it's going to hit the bottom value pretty quickly if we put it about here. That's going to be off. So how can we actually reverse that? So we know that the value here of the mod wheel is now set to zero and that zero is based on its current position here. So with the mod wheel closed, we actually want to open this up so we have a lot of delay in our sound. So now we've got plenty of delay. We actually want to tell this to turn that down. So we just drag that now the other way. point we can turn it off. So now we have a little bit more of a complex control. We can actually control of how much delay is being added as the filter is opening, which is less in this case because we've told that to turn the dry wet down. 
So now we have one control controlling two parameters. So let's make it four. We'll just attach these to some very basic controls just to give you an idea of what's happening. So as the filter opens, let's just say we want the EQ. We just want the top end a little bit quieter. So instead of doing this live, we need to set this into position to how we want it. So that sounds quite nice with the EQ level upwards when the filter is closed. So I'm going to set that level to where I want it to be when the filter is closed. And when the filter is opening, we want it to change back to zero. So we're going to drag that across. And we want to do the same as the delay dry wet. So we're actually going to turn this down and we can do this by ear. So let's do this a different way so we can hear exactly what is happening. We can see that is exactly the same as doing this. So now when this mod wheel is opened, it's taming the higher frequencies using the level of our upper frequencies. And finally, target number four, we'll just assign this to the envelope. So we can't see the envelopes because the mod matrix is here. So we're going to use the list. I'm going to scroll down till we see envelope one. This is our master envelope, which controls the overall shape of our sound. And we're going to choose decay. Let's have a look here. So we can see sustain is pretty low in this instance. So decay is the one we want to choose. And we can say we want this to actually get shorter or longer. So let's pick longer first and let's see what it sounds like. As you can see, the decay is going from a longer sustained note to a shorter plucked note, and that is all controlled just using the decay. Now, if you have the sustain control as well, I would recommend automating that as well. So the question you'll be asking is, we've run out of target slots. Can we actually do that? There is nothing to say that you can't drag and drop mod one onto the next slot and have another four targets and so forth through the page. You could have every single slot on every page up to slot 15 all assigned to mod 1 and you could modulate every single parameter you want. So let's use another example. I'm going to create a high pass effect using the EQ low cut and then we're going to use some effects to add a nice sort of transitional sound and we're not going to speak through this one. I'm just going to let you watch how I program this and just how I am actually using the audio being played at the same time as setting these target positions so we get the best out of the sound instead of just trying to guess where they're meant to be.
there we have mod wheel number two. Now it's not the perfect of high cuts, but what we can do is assign that to a filter so we can actually set the filter input to be midway between both of the filters in Spire. And then we can just use say Scorpio and then the high pass four. And we can actually use the filter balance and the cutoff to create a high pass sweep that way as well. So you can get a more true high pass if you wanted to do it that way. But what I'm trying to show you here is how I've just quickly layered the low end frequency as well as the level. So I've increased the frequency across, so it's sweeping more and more of that lower detail out and then dropping the level at the same time, which is you can see there's only a little bit to drop, but I wanted it to drop pretty quickly. So I've put that to 100% to the left. The delay here has been set to nearly, well, that will be 100 depending on that position there. So that will be 100% dry wet. And then the same for the reverb. You could see I was just shaping that reverb there using the dampening and the color. So increase the decay rate so it's a little bit more obvious as some reverb. And then the color is just really like a high and a low cut. So I'm just removing some of the lower information to start with. The dampening is just holding that back a little bit on the top end so it's not too bright. And then the width is set to not fully up, but it just sounded about right there for that instance. Depending on the track you're making, you will tweak these a little bit different. But that is a basic high pass using mod number two. Another example of using the mod matrix is to change your sound entirely, to give it more timbre, to give you more control. And what I like to do is give you a sound, but then let you be able to morph that sound how I would actually design the preset. So this is the more creative side of using these. These are practical. That's what I like to call practical knobs. They're the things that we, you would use and how you would actually make the sound change. So let's pick a sound. Let's play this through and find something that we like the sound of. So let's try bass one to start with. So let's say we like that position, sounds quite nice. I'm just gonna put two voices on this just to make it a little bit more interesting. And let's say we like that sound, but we don't want to tweak those to that position. We want to be able to go back to that saw wave, but remember these settings. And that's really easy. We can set the targets here. So we've got three targets. The first one, the logical one that I would make is the wavetable mix, so I'm gonna put that first. Then I controlled the position, and then I controlled the mix of adding the square in. So I think it was about there. So we can turn the mod wheel down. That's the sound we had. pretty close and then I'm just going to mimic these for the other two as well. So now that we have that set up, we can actually have those parameters set in the mod matrix and then these will move to that position. But everything in between is now an option with all of these moving at different rates. So this one's gone to 11, this one's gone to about two o'clock. They're all moving at different rates. So this one will be actually sweeping through slower because we only went to here. So we're only going through that little portion of where we turn that dial. Whereas this one was turned all the way. So there's half of the dial just over so that's going to sweep through a lot more range. So we're getting a very consistent change of sound, which we wouldn't be able to do just by doing that by hand every time. So if you listen, we actually have plenty of different tonal qualities about this sound now.
And for example, if you don't want this saw wave to sound as sharp as it does, we can actually just shave that off by introducing modulation wheel three because we're actually softening the sound with this. And that doesn't just sit there, we can actually introduce other oscillators. So for example, oscillator two, if we just turn it a little bit so this light turns on, it means you can't hear it, but it's activated and ready to go. We can actually assign oscillator two, three and four amplitudes, which are these, to that target. So let's drag Alt and hit down to target force. Now we've got amp oscillator two in there. We're going to turn this up to about halfway, so it's turning up to halfway on there. And we're going to choose a sine wave one octave above the other one. got a bit of a sine wave. And now we have a set of controls that we can use to shape our sound and I'm just going to show you mods 1, 2 and 3 all working together. And there we have it, that is a little introduction into the mod matrix. And as always, if you have any comments, please drop one down below. There are plenty of people in the comments as well that are very well clued up on their technical knowledge, so I'm sure they can help you if I don't get back to you first. And also hit the like button and the subscribe if you haven't already, so you get more weekly videos. And don't forget to hit the notification bell so you actually get notified as soon as I upload and you don't miss out on anything. So thank you very much for watching, and I'll see you all in the next video.